Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So the theme for this week is going to be living off the land. And what that means is using what you have, built-in binaries and scripts and really abusing them in creative ways to be able to maintain your operations. So threat actors have been living off the land for a while. We're going to be taking a look at two of the more recent examples here. And the first one we're going to be talking about is the Cactus ransomware. So this is a prickly new ransomware, uh, ransomware variant that has been evading detections. And why does that evade detections? Well, spoiler alert, again, they are living off the land in a lot of cases, especially for the, the early parts of their kill chain. So this is some really interesting threat intelligence from Kroll. Again, this is something that they observed um, in one of their customer networks and had to do some incident response on here. So you can see a lot of the techniques. So they get onto the network through um, exploitation of a VPN. They're using command and control with SSH. So very simple early on. They're doing, you know, network scanning. They are, you know, maintaining persistence on the machines, dumping credentials, eventually maybe using something a little bit more complex like Cobalt Strike. And again, right before they go ahead and deploy the ransomware, they're going to disable and install antivirus software and other tools, which again can be a little bit more noisy. Um, add some final persistence as administrator accounts, you know, exfiltrate any information and then deploy the ransomware. So um, when you get threat intelligence like this, where you have, again, clear examples of commands that attackers are using. So this is their install.bat. Uh, batch script. You can see some of the commands that they're using for, you know, internal reconnaissance. You can see, you know, when we talked about um, disabling um, very various antivirus products using MSI exec to uninstall these, you know, disabling, um, you know, other security tools. These are all things that you can, again, take back into a lab, you can emulate, and you can, you know, really understand what it is that the threat actor is doing and you can see if your detections would be able to stand up against this. So definitely take a look at the threat intelligence here. We're going to hop over to snap attack, take a look at a couple of these threats. Uh, don't have time to replicate the full kill chain here, but we can take a look at a couple of snippets. So the first one we're going to take a look at is some of that internal scanning, like we mentioned via PowerShell. So I could go ahead, I could play this this threat capture. I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit more in the video. So we're going to rerun a couple of those commands. This one is going to do some remote system discovery. This one is going to do user discovery. Um, this one is going to, you know, view Windows logons. So we're going to run, you know, those various commands in here. And again, we can see that there are detection opportunities here. Again, there's PowerShell logging. You can see, you know, the various things on the command line. So how would we detect this sort of activity? Um, there's some great detections from the Sigma community repo. This one is looking at, um, you know, discovery of exporting, you know, via the Git AD computer. So you can see examples of, um, you know, when this would be run and, you know, some of the log files here. Again, this is going to be using your PowerShell um, module script lock logging event 4104. Um, you also have user discovery and enumeration script. So Again, another type of way that you can detect for this. So looking for, you know, usage around Git AD user, you know, the Git AD computer, other sort of reconnaissance. So again, this, these sort of rules, um, again, probably alone might not be the highest confidence to deploy. Um, depends a lot on your, you know, your network and your environment. Um, if these things are going to be pretty rare, um, again, there are legitimate uses, you know, system administrator activity looking through. So, um, usually these sort of things become very interesting when you cluster them within a period of time to say, okay, I'm not just looking at this one off, but I'm looking at all of these different commands together. And usually that's a good thing and a good approach to think about when you're talking about living off the land binaries and scripts. Um, another example that we talked about from this kill chain was removing security tools. Again, it's really helpful to, um, you know, get rid of antivirus or EDRs because those can be very pesky when you're trying to deploy ransomware. So, you know, we're going to, you know, pull that script that they had there and we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to run that in here. So you're going to see us um, opening up that uninstall.bat file. It's going to process several of those things, um, running MSI, you know, exec to remove, um, you know, various tools. We're going to see Bitdefender was removed at the end. 
and again, lots of different detection opportunities. We're going to highlight specifically just that Bitdefender one here, because um, again, I think it's a little bit new, a little bit different. Um, this is not something that we had a threat for in Snap Attack before this one. So um, using this method, the, the best uninstall tool, which again is built in here with the BD params to disable that. So this is um, one of the ways that Bitdefender can be uninstalled, and this is Again, something that should be rare. So if your organization is using Bitdefender, um, this would be something you would want to deploy and alert for and monitor. Last part of this kill chain, again, that final phase where they're going to um, extract and execute the encryptor. Uh, if we went back to um, you know the actual threat intelligence, there's um, kind of this kind of final scripted salvo that you'll see that they're going to run. So we're going to you know run that. Um, script with again a, a sample of the uh, malware that we were able to find and obtain. Um, so you can see what that would look like here in Snap Attack. And uh, pausing for the video, so yeah, this was the F2, that kind of final stage. And you can see, so that did its stuff. It's about to restart the machine. And again, there's a, a cluster of detection activity here before we have that, you know, system reboot where the um, encryptor is, you know, going to be run where we're doing some other defense evasion techniques. And again, really the one that I'm going to highlight here that again, is just kind of interesting is, um, again, a lot of times ransomware, you're going to see them disabling volume shadow copies and other things. And this one is, um, modifying, um, the master boot record, um, the MBR via BCD edit. So this is again, one of those that's a little bit more rare in our threat library. Um, and you know, seeing that the Cactus ransomware was using this um, was definitely something interesting to point out. So this is yet another Windows tool, which again has legitimate uses, but also can be used and abused by threat actors, um, this being no exception here. So that's a little bit about Cactus. Let's pivot over to a little bit more recent uh, threat. So this came out yesterday. This is a joint release by um, NSA, by CISA. Uh, Microsoft also has their own blog post. And this is about um, nation state actor China. Um, they're classifying this threat actor, um, attributing it to Volt Typhoon. And they're using a bunch of living off the land techniques to evade detections. So um, meme game is very strong on this one uh, on the internet. So uh, you know, I, I will say definitely take a look at some of those. Um, when you really get into the report and you see all of the commands and things that they're running, again, we talk about nation state actors as these advanced persistent threats. Um, well, looking at a lot of these commands, they certainly don't seem very advanced. Maybe they're persistent, so they, they are definitely threats. Um, but you'll see a lot of these things. And again, they should light up a security tool like a Christmas tree. Um, a lot of stuff that we've talked about, a lot of things that we've covered before. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of interesting stuff in this report. So you can see a bunch of the commands that they ran. Um, I'm, again, also said Microsoft has a report. There's, you know, some overlap here, but some additional things that they point out. You know, one way that you can, again, how do I make this threat intelligence actionable is, again, let's just run those commands. Let's see what we have. So. You can see here, we've got all of the different threats. We have all of the different detections. I could do a very deep dive into this. That would take a lot of time to go over them. And quite frankly, some of these detections are, are very much you know common and known. I'm gonna highlight a couple of the interesting ones from the report. So one of the things earlier up here that they were talking about was um, the ntds.dit um, file. So. On Active Directory, this file is the uh, Active Directory database, and that is going to store all the information about users, groups, password hashes. And there's a couple of ways that you can obtain this file. Normally, that is going to be protected. So you can uh, use shadow copies, as they show here. So using VSS admin to create a shadow copy. Um, that file is going to be encrypted. So again, you're going to have to pull um, the system registry hive and be able to get the key to decrypt that. But there is another way that you can get access to this database, and this is using the built-in NTDS util. Um, this is going to be installed a domain controller. Um, it's meant for legitimate um, activity by a system administrator. And what they are going to do is use these commands. So this activate instance and IFM to create an install for media format. 
And what this is basically going to do is if I'm going to create a new domain controller, uh, maybe I'm doing an upgrade, maybe I'm expanding my domain, I can literally copy that Active Directory domain database over to that other domain controller in an offline format. So instead of doing that sync initially when you're you know, installing your domain control, this is gonna at least get the DC up and running you know, with a current copy of the database. So really cool technique. Again, this is also a little bit harder to detect because for convenience, they have short and long form. So you could be looking for activate instance, you could be looking for ACI, you could be looking for IFM or literally just the character I. So gotta be very careful with how you're looking at this sort of detection. And that's why we do have, you know, things like this in Snap Attack where we can detect this. Um, interesting to also see other threats in our library. So um, we did a snapshot last year around this time um, when Cisco was compromised. They had, um, we put together a kill chain threat. Definitely take a look at that video. But this exact command, and again, these formats were seen there here in that breach too. So this is definitely something that threat actors use. Um, we can see another threat with secret stump. And then finally, this Volt Typhoon session that we just created here this time. Again, you can see it using the more shorthand form of this to create a full dump of the NTDS database. So interesting detection or interesting threat there. Um, another one that they talk about here is port proxy. So um, this is again using NetSH, which is a built-in um, Windows network shell, and they are creating a way to do port forwarding. Um, interesting, novel, um, haven't seen a lot of that before, so I wanted to just call that out here. Um, there are some threats, you know, in Snap Attack around that, and you know, you know, Atomic Red Team has some if you want to emulate that too as well. So there are a couple of ways that we can, um, you know, detect that. Uh, again, I'm going to call out a couple of Sigma detections here. So uh, port forwarding with um, NetSH. So this one has a couple of hits, again, uh, from Volt Tycoon in the library, as well as the um, Atomic Red Team's uh, port proxy reg key. Um, so you can detect that from NetSH. And the other thing in the threat intelligence they mentioned is you can also detect this from the registry key. So if you wanted to look for HKLM system, you know, and looking for that port proxy um, IPv4 to v4 TCP, you can actually see um, this being created. So this is just yet another way we talk about detection in depth. So, um, you know, you technically don't even have to use NetSH. If you wanted to just put this registry key in there, um, this would actually do everything that you would need to. So that's just another way that an attacker could evade that if they didn't want to leave command line artifacts. Um, last one we'll talk about in here. Um, so this was also kind of a, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more rare technique. Again, don't have time to cover all of them. And this is another built-in, um, you know, Windows utility, the LDIFDE. Um, not something I have seen typically when administering an Active Directory environment, but um, it's going to allow you to export the organizational structure of Active Directory. So you know, we can see a couple samples in snap attack here of a user, you know, running this command to output that to again, like give me the directory as a, you know, a tree or a subtree file. So uh, definitely uh, something that you would want to add to your arsenal, just again, because it's a, a relatively rare sort of technique. And again, alone, this maybe isn't going to set off an incident response, but when you put all of these together in context, um, that's a lot of suspicious activity and it's definitely worth warranting. So again, hopefully you can cover and help protect your organization from these living off the land threats. Um, Snap Attack is here to help and it, hopefully you enjoyed this threat snapshot. This is a weekly series. Like, subscribe, comment below the video, and we'll see you next week.